10.38 on a Thursday morning. Have you ever had a complete mental block about a problem, a project that you're involved in? Frustrating, isn't it? Well, new research from Harvard Medical School suggests the secret to unlocking your inner creativity and finding innovative, innovative solutions is as simple as taking a brief nap. Can it really be that easy? Here to talk about it is the co-author of the Creative Thinking Handbook, Chris Griffiths. Chris, good morning. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. Great to be uh, talking about creativity this morning. Good to have you with us this morning. This idea from Harvard of napping, unlocking our creativity, how does it work? How does it work? Well, let, let's look at it another way. In today's fast-paced society, um, we're all working at 100 miles per hour. So we all start to fall foul of what's called busy fool syndrome. It's where you're just... You, you think productivity is getting things done or getting things done quicker. But if you're doing the wrong things in the first place, it's not helping you get anywhere. So you need to take a step back. You need to give yourself time to think. And of course, everyone feels guilty if, if they step away from, from the uh, being logged in on the computer screen or if they step out of the office and go for a walk. And yet, absolutely 100% that's going to help you think better um, because it's freeing up more of the resources of your brain to connect new ideas. So taking naps is exactly that sort of premise in terms of you're allowing your brain to step away from being task, task orientated and actually allow it to, to solve its, it, it, its problems. I mean, Stephen, where do you get your best ideas? Let, let me ask you that. Um, I, I get them staring out the window, usually, or yeah, t giving me, myself that permission to have space, Chris. And, and that's absolutely right. It's the same. You ask that question anywhere around the world and everyone will say the same thing. You know, they get their best ideas when they're walking in nature, when they're on the toilet, when they're doing the dishes, when they're staring out the window. And, and the whole reason for that is you might think you're letting your brain relax at that point. But um, as, as New Scientist magazine put on the cover of their, their magazine, and it was a, a brilliant heading um, for, the, for, for the magazine, it was a vacant mind is a busy brain. And what scientists have learned is when you allow yourself to daydream, your brain goes into overdrive. The areas that, that deal with memories and um, even executive fun function like decision making, they start to connect uh, all new dots and concepts within your within your brain. So that's where you come up with these these new original ideas rather than when you just try and focus where you're very limited in what you're allowing the brain to do. Yeah, I get that. Staring out the window for me, dog walk as well, it's a similar thing. Now, we, we might think about, when we you talk about creative thinking, Chris, we automatically think about writers, don't we? Or maybe artists yeah. as well. But this, this can apply to every single one of us in our everyday lives. I, I think it's really important that, that people understand that creativity is, is absolutely vital now. We're, we're entering a a new age, um, AI is going to accelerate everything, um, including creative thinking, but it will change the nature of work because, you know, if we had had this conversation maybe a decade ago, we would have both agreed that knowledge was power or maybe the use of knowledge was power. But with AI now, anyone can find out what they need to know when they need to know it. So the real power is going to be the creation of new knowledge and that comes from creativity. So. Everyone needs to be upskilling now that, you know, if you want to progress in, in, in your career, you have to look at where you can bring the value, where I, AI isn't going to replace you. Um, but actually, AI is, is, is going to be very positive for creativity because, again, um, if you consider creativity being dots to join, AI can quickly give you a lot more dots to join as long as you then get away and allow your brain time to, to think and, and daydream. So let's think about this in the workplace. The worst possible scenario is a manager getting 10 people around a table and going, right, I want some new ideas from you right now. That's never going to work, is it? Based on what you're saying, what they should be doing is saying, go for a walk, go down by the river, look out the window for 10 minutes, then come back and we'll have a chat about this. It's, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I see that all the time. So a lot of organisations that, that we work with are really highly creative organizations. Um, however, they, they often come to, to me and say, well, our brainstorming sessions just don't work. Why don't they work? And um, for, the, for the reasons you just pointed out, they're not actually brainstorming. When they get together in that room, they're, they're, actually, um, they're, they're actually analyzing each other's ideas because if somebody comes up with an idea, everyone else in the room 
their direction, their mental direction has focused on what that person has said. So they've stopped being creative themselves. So um, the old ways of working no longer work. And, um, you know, a, a good leader would know that if you're going to have a brainstorming session with your team, what you do is you have multiple small sessions. So you literally just get those 10 people together for 30 minutes. You you try and define what the problem is. That's such an important point. Um, then you go away for a day. Let, let the whole team incubate those ideas because um, they're not being influenced by other people in the group. And then when they come back the next day, have another 30 minutes, uh, and then you keep doing that, um, you know, for, for as long as you can or until you, you find a solution. But what you're not doing is all sitting around a boardroom table trying to force out a, a solution in a three-hour meeting, which is what tends to happen. And, you know, creativity, innovation is not an event. It's a process. It's continuous. So you, you have to change the way that you get teams to to be creative, and you have to help them have that time to incubate and 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 think because that's when their brain is really going to come up with something something new. I guess that's why an app is so powerful, Chris, isn't it? Because it's a complete reboot. Even if you find it hard to to stare out the window and let your mind go blank and daydream, if if you go for that half hour nap, you're forcing your brain to do that switch on and switch off. Well, you are, but you, you don't have to take a nap. I mean, obviously, some of the great inventors use that as a process. So Edison would, um, you know, have sit on his chair, have his notebook next to him, have um, ball bearings in his hand, and he'd allow himself to drift off into a state where his mind could wander. But he was still focusing. This is focus daydreaming we're talking about, not daydreaming about holidays or worrying about things. This is focusing and just letting your mind wander about it. Um, and obviously, as he drifted into sleep, his hand would open, the balls would drop on the floor, he'd wake up, and he'd write things down. But the same the same principles hold true when you go for a walk, or even if you're doing the dishes or, or doing the ironing, because when you start doing mundane, repetitive tasks, uh, your brain, well, part of your brain, the brain that deals with sort of um, problem solving and decision making goes into autopilot because it can. So all of a sudden you're free to to daydream. So again, it's one of those things, isn't it? If you if, if people are working from home, they'll feel guilty if if they're doing the dishes or doing the ironing. Um, but actually, if there's a problem they just can't get through, the worst thing they can do is continue to sit in front of a, a laptop or a, a notebook trying to force their way through it. That's just going to create more stress, which means less chance of them coming up with solution. So they should get away and go for a walk or do the dishes and, and focus with with, sorry, daydream with focus. This is this is your meat and two veg. This is your business, Chris. Give us three tips for people who've got something that they need to find a creative solution to in their lives right now, and they've just hit that block. Three tips for creativity. What would you say? Well, th look, the first one is, is definitely give yourself time to think. Um, don't become a busy fool. So in your diary, make sure that you put space for thinking time. And if you're a leader, make sure you allow your team to have space for thinking time. That's absolutely vital. And, and then secondly, if you're going to use the vast resource of your brain and allow your subconscious and your conscious mind to work together, um, you need to do what great thinkers would call thought experiments. So these are daydreams. So it's about focusing on your challenge and then letting your mind wander and play out different scenarios about that challenge. And if you if that's not working for you, then literally pick random endpoints and just imagine how you could make those things happen. Imagine if there was no fear. Play thought experiments. You know, what would you do if there was no fear? Or if you were looking back on this point in time five years from now, what would you wish you had done? Um, so those are all things that you can do when you're daydreaming. And then finally, the third one is a bit more all-encompassing. All I mean, we did a, a study with 5,000 people. Um, half of the group were very interested in creativity and innovation. The other group were people that we randomly got to do um, creativity tests from the internet. What was interesting is the group that was interested in creativity and just learning about how to be more creative scored 30% higher on creativity mm. tests than the group that wasn't interested. So literally just by reading up on how you can be more creative is going to help you. And look, 100% creativity is what's going to drive the winners 
of, of, of the next um, decade because things are changing so quickly with the a with AI coming coming into uh, into play. Fascinating, Chris. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Chris Griffiths is uh, co-author of the Creative Thinking Handbook. Right now, we're at ten forty nine on a Thursday morning. It's BBC Radio Scotland.